Okay, so now we're moving on to solve by taking the square root, or technically you can square a function to get the same thing. The concept here is that we're identifying either um, that you can literally square root something or that you can square it a factor or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't really have a by squaring example except for the one we did in class. Um, but if you need to see me about that, you sure can. And I'll talk about it a little more in our factoring video. So how do I recognize that I can take the square root? Well, there's a square right there. And there's only one trig concept. There's not multiple trigs in it. So more than likely, I don't have to deal with factoring or anything like that just yet. So I begin with just my solve. Peanut butter and jelly guy tells me you could have done it a little different and that's okay, but I'm gonna show you my pattern. So I move that four over. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with the multiplication of three. And now I can deal with that square root. Do not forget your order of operations dealing with your addition subtraction, then your multiplication division, then your exponents, and then your parentheses. So now when I square root, just recall, every time you square root or even root something, you need that plus or minus. So I end up with this plus or minus one over the square root of three. To finish this solve, I need to invert it. So that's what we did. We went ahead and inverted our tangent function. So now X is by itself. From here, you need to solve the inverse on your own. Okay, just a preview of what I did. I used the hand trick and I found these were my four answers. Okay, because it's plus or minus, technically those are my four answers and I'm done. However, because tan has a restricted period already of zero to pi, I'm allowed to cancel out two of my answers and I'm only left with these two answers. I don't forget to tack this on because this accounts for my coterminals. But if you notice, this doesn't say two pi n, it says pi n. This is that weirdo, tan and cotan. There are weird functions. All right, let's move on to one more question. So again, very similar concept. I'm gonna move that 15. Then I'm gonna divide by the five. Now I can deal with the square root. I cannot forget that when I square root three, it's not just gonna be the square root of three, but it's plus or minus the square root of three. I finish my solve for X by inverting, and now I'm ready to use whatever trick I need to solve the inverse. Like I said, I used the hand trick when teaching. So the hand trick I used, I found my four values for the square root of three um, were all part of my pi over three values. But because I know I have a restricted tangent, I can get rid of my last two values and I'm just left with this. Again, I don't forget to tack this on for coterminal angles. Alrighty, here's your question.